Now we're going to work with our inverse trig functions. In number 12a, we've got theta equals the inverse secant of negative square root of 2. Remember that with your three reciprocal functions, if you have cotangent or secant or cosecant, if you're trying to do this especially with your calculator, then you want to change it to its reciprocal function. In this one, the reciprocal of secant is cosine. If we're going to change this to inverse cosine, when we do that, we also have to take the inside and flip it over. We would make this 1 over the negative square root of 2. This one, since we're looking for a degree measure, we could do this on the calculator. Be very careful when you're doing this that you know what mode your calculator is in. If we're trying to find the degree measure, we want to make sure our calculator is in degree mode. And then we would just do inverse cosine of negative 1 over the square root of 2. That's going to give us 135 degrees. Remember that the other notation for the inverse trig functions is if you have arc in front of them, this is the same as the inverse sine of negative 0.9217. This is one that we could just do on our calculator. Again, we're looking for a degree measure, so we're going to leave our calculator in degree mode. And on the calculator, this is going to give us a negative angle. It would be negative 67.2 degrees. But this problem didn't ask for the angles to be in any certain interval, so it's fine if it comes out to be negative. In number 13, we're looking for exact values, and this is where we're combining a trig function and an inverse trig function. One way that you can do this is by drawing these as triangles on a graph. What we want to think about anytime we have an inverse trig function, this whole thing is going to be equal to an angle. So we could call this whole angle here theta. If this is true, that means that the tangent of theta would be equal to 2. And since we want to do this as a triangle, we're actually going to write this as 2 over 1. Remember that when we were doing our triangle with the x, the y, and the r, tangent was equal to y over x. So when we draw this, we're going to make our y 2 and our x 1. That would mean that we'd have the point 1, 2 on the graph. And then we're just drawing in our right triangle. So this length is 1, this length is 2. And then we could find our r from there. Remember that r was the square root of x squared plus y squared. That would give us the square root of 5 for the hypotenuse of our triangle. And what we're talking about is that this angle right here is our theta. So now what we're trying to find is the cosine of theta. Cosine is x over r, so that would be 1 over the square root of 5. Let's do the same thing with this one. Remember that arc sine is the same thing as inverse sine. We're going to just make this whole thing equal to an angle. If theta is equal to the inverse sine of 3 fifths, that means that the sine of theta is equal to 3 fifths. We're going to draw this on the graph again. This time sine is y over r. Our y would be 3 and our r would be 5. That makes this 5. This would be a 3, and then we would need to figure out the x, the other side of our triangle. That would turn out to be 4. Now what we're looking for is the tangent of theta. Here's our angle theta right here. The tangent of theta would be y over x, which would be 3 over 4. In this one, we've got a little something extra to do because we've got 2 in front of our inverse trig function. We're still going to think about this inverse trig function part as being an angle, so we're going to call that theta. What we really have here then is the sine of 2 theta. For this, we would want to use one of our double angle identities. The sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. To calculate this, we need to know both the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. Let's go back to this. Our theta is equal to the inverse cotangent of 12 fifths. That tells us that the cotangent of theta is 
12 fifths. A cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so this would be the same as x over y. That means when we draw our picture, we're going to make our x 12 and our y 5. Our point out here would be the point 12, 5. This side of our triangle is 5, this side is 12. The r would turn out to be 13. For this, we need to know both the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. Here's our theta. Sine of theta is y over r. That would be 5 over 13. Cosine of theta is x over r. That would be 12 over 13. For this, we have 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. That would be 2 times 5 over 13 times 12 over 13, and that would give us 120 over 169. In number 14, we're trying to find the exact value of s in this interval. This would be the first quadrant, where the tangent of s is equal to the square root of 3. Since we're talking about an exact value, this is where we probably want to look at our unit circle. This is going to be a value for one of our special angles. Remember that tangent is sine over cosine, so this would be the same as sine of s over cosine of s. For this to end up being the square root of 3, some of the values for some of our special angles are the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. We would want to make the top of this the square root of 3 over 2 and the bottom 1 half so that we would end up with the square root of 3 when we simplify. Where this is true, that the sine of s is the square root of 3 over 2, that would be if s were equal to pi over 3. Now in number 15, we're trying to find an exact value again. This time if we look at our interval between pi over 2 and pi, that is the second quadrant. We want to find the angle where the cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2. That makes sense because cosine is negative in the second quadrant. What we could do with this is first find the reference angle for s, and then figure out the second quadrant angle that would be in the same family. Since this answer is supposed to be in radians, we can do this by families of our special angles. So if we look at where cosine of theta is the positive square root of 2 over 2 in the first quadrant, this would be at 45 degrees, or in radians, that would be pi over 4. So this is our reference angle. Now we want the second quadrant angle that has the same value for cosine. To get that, we're going to take pi minus pi over 4. And that would give us 3 pi over 4. In number 16, we want to find the value of s in the interval from 0 to pi over 2, where cosecant of s is equal to 3.6185. Now this time we're not looking for an exact answer because it tells us to round our answer to two decimal places. That means we can use our calculator for this. Since this is one of the reciprocal functions though, we need to switch this to one of our three main functions, sine, cosine, or tangent. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so we're going to switch this to sine. When we do that, we have to do the reciprocal of the value over here. That means sine of s would be 1 over 3.6185. To solve this for s, we're going to use the inverse sine. So that means s would be the inverse sine of 1 over 3.6185. We can put this in the calculator all in one step, and then we're rounding our answer to two decimal places. Remember though, since these values are in radians, we want our calculator to be in radian mode. If we have our calculator in radian mode, we're going to get an answer for this of 0.28, rounded to two decimal places.